Hi, welcome to this week's edition of Consider This, a very unique Bible study. I'm Pastor Cheryl and I want to welcome you and thank you for joining us. Pastor Rick's going to continue his series, Sermon on the Mouth. Tonight's teaching, how to give a terrific testimony. Now let's join Pastor Rick. Hi everyone. Well, this is the last message of this four-part series. I'm Pastor Rick. Great to have you here. If you're a first-time visitor, we always tell you that uh, the reason that we call this, consider this, I don't think I have the cornerstone on truth. We teach the Bible and we tell you the things that work for us and uh, we're just asking you to consider what our opinion is and take it from there. Well, so we uh, just say a little prayer before we start. Lord Jesus, we'd ask you that you remove any of our fears, our guilt, our anger, and our pride, and open our minds and open our hearts. And Lord, reveal something to us brand new tonight that'll change our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, and everyone said amen. Well, great. Here's the first slide. It says this. We're talking about testimonies. and I'm going to begin by talking about who shared their testimony in the Bible. You know, there are many people that shared their testimony in the Bible. And the reason is, is that, you know, how do people you know, hear how God and the great things that God has done in our lives. I use the acronym HOPE, H-O-P-E, is hearing other people's experiences. So, you know, it's amazing. We, uh, I'm working on a, on a new book called Many Miracles, and I'm just outlining the chapters for it right now, and I'm writing down different things that God has done in our life. And the more that I'm putting down the names of the chapters, the more that I'm sitting there going, I cannot believe the miracles that God has done in our lives. Well, the Bible is also filled with people who, that, you know, wonderful miracles of things that, you know, have happened in people's life. Let's begin with this first slide here. Cheryl, what does it say? Who's this first person here? David. From Psalm 66, it says what? Come and listen, and I will tell you what God has done for me. People want to, you know, the, the Bible says in Revelation, it's the blood of the Lamb, which means grace, and then the word of our testimony. Testimonies are powerful. This is how get people to believe in God. You know, we a lot of times people may believe in government. They believe in my life will get better if I make more money. My life will get better if I have a, a nicer car, nicer clothes. But the bottom line is, the Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God, and the rest will be added to you. We all need God in our lives for a life to be better. Who's the second person, Cheryl, that we're sharing tonight about? The woman at the well. Many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. It's amazing because, you know, how do we know who somebody is? You know, you, you may be talking to somebody and you say, geez, I listen to this Bible study every week and it really changes my life. Well, that is a testimony in essence. And somebody will say, well, geez, you know, what's the web address? I'd like to check it out. You know, so testimonies are very important. In fact, if you think about watching an infomercial, what makes you a lot of times decide to buy the product? It's the testimony. It's the woman who says, I've used this product for two years and it's changed my life. Now, this next one is probably my favorite one because it really reminds me of myself. It's about the man born blind. Here it is. My wife is going to read it to you right now. I don't know whether he is good or bad, but I know this, I was blind and now I see. Well, one version of the Bible says, you know, I, I, I don't know who he is, but I know I was blind and I see. You know, I, I can't tell you all in depth the reasons why I believe the teachings of Jesus Christ and the presence of Jesus Christ has changed my life, but I, I know it has. I can't intellectually explain it to you sometimes, but I just know it's made a difference in my life. Here's the next two people in the Bible that share their testimony. Peter and John. We cannot stop telling about the wonderful things we have seen and heard. It was a wonderful movie out, it came out a little while ago, it's called Son of God, and I love it when the uh, Apostle John in the beginning of the movie says, how can I not believe with what I've seen? I, I can't even imagine what it must be like to have walked with Jesus and seen these miracles and see things that just absolutely did not make sense to, to a regular person. Well, they gave their testimony and, and they were willing to die. If you read books like Fox's Book of Martyrs and you look at how many people have died for their testimony, uh, you know, for what God has done in their life, you, they, won't, they refuse to you know, tell, tell people that it didn't really happen because they know it did. I've had people talk to me and say, I don't believe in miracles. And I'd sit there and think, well, just cut yourself and watch the miracle of how it heals itself. Well, he says, you know, I mean like people walking out of wheelchairs. And I'll sit there and say, it's happened to me. And some people don't even believe it. Well, believe what you want to believe. But I'll tell you what, I know that it happened to me. It's God is real and God changes people's life. Let's take a look at what Paul, what Paul had to say in Acts 22 through 26. On six different occasions, 
Paul used his personal testimony to share the good news with unbelievers. Yeah, I didn't want to write it all down because it would take up too many, too many slides. But if you read uh, verses 22 to 26, you'll just hear all the different times where Paul is sharing his testimony, what God has done in his life. Now, here's the big, I'm a, I am a motivational speaker. As much as I am a preacher and a teacher, a motivational teacher has to do with why. Why we do what we do. The motive of what we do. That's why in this next slide, what is, is, here's the motive. It's why share your testimony. Okay, take a look at this first, uh, this first scripture here. It says in 1 John. Those who believe in the Son of God have the testimony of God in them. You know, I've always wondered this. If people aren't sharing information and, and what God has done for them in their lives and things that they've learned, I'm wondering if they really have God in them. Are they, you know, are they sharing to other people? Uh, you know, maybe people don't share because either they're afraid or maybe they don't share because they don't remember what God has done. Or maybe they don't share because they've never felt, you know, the, the wonderful things that God has done in their lives. Take a look at this next scripture in Psalms. Let the whole world know what he has done for you. Well, you know, that's why we do this webcast. We're not the professionals at doing this. We do the best we can with the equipment we have and the, the, uh, the location we're in and all of this. But we just want to um, tell the world what God has done for us. You know, we're hoping that maybe somebody from another country clicks on and understands English and that this, this uh, testimony will, will change. I remember I, was sent, I used to send out things called truth text, and they were just scriptures I sent out. And this one guy, I saw him one day, and he said, you know, you've really changed my life. And I said, how's that? He said, I was about ready to go out and pound somebody in. And he said, just when I was about ready to at somebody's house to go in there and cause this person bodily harm, he said, in came your little text about you know, the goodness of God. And he said, I was focused on the badness of men. But that little text there changed his life. Let's take a look at another scripture in Psalms that we'll see what it says here. Every day, tell how he saves us. Tell the nations of his glory. Tell all people the miracles he does. Well, you know, I, I really believe that, uh, you know, when he says, tell people every day how he saves you, how many times have we you know, of getting frustrated or we're going to make a bad choice or something. And, you know, our pride says, ah, oh, we'll get away with it or something. And yet what is happening is our little conscious, the Holy Spirit, God himself says that isn't a, you know, a, a great choice to make. In fact, I was in here and I had to go out in the hallway. I just before we filmed Bible study, I just needed to go find God, all the, you know, trying to set up an equipment problems and everything. And I went out there and I just found my peace and the Lord said, okay, now you're ready to come back in. That's the power of just turning to God and doing the right thing. Now we're going to talk about, as next slide says, it says this. It says the value of your testimony. Here is the value of your testimony and why your testimony. I have a testimony. Cheryl has a testimony. Liv has a testimony. People that we work with here have testimonies. But it's the value of your testimony. Why is it so important for you to share your testimony to people. Here's number one. Here's the value of your testimony. It's unique. There are no others just like it. Here's the amazing thing is that uh, when you share your testimony, don't, don't, don't ever feel discouraged because look, my testimony is a testimony of drugs and adultery and craziness and abuse and all this. And Cheryl's has that very unique testimony. It's hers is more of being able to hang in there and being committed and and, and not just losing it all and giving up. But her testimony can reach, you know, a person that's totally different than, than I am. I mean, I can reach the drug addict or maybe the person who puts his fist through the wall and, you know, the crazy person and all of that. But Shoa can read, reach other people that are just about ready to give up on their marriages or give up at work or give up in life. So you remember that it's your testimony. It's your testimony. It's unique, and God will use your uniqueness at the right moment at the right time. Here's number two. It's personal. It's easy to understand. When I teach Bible study, you know, sometimes, you know, I, I can get deep and, and maybe people just sit there and go, I have no idea what you're talking about. I remember I wrote a book one time, and I didn't know if I was very deep in the book. The book was called Maturity 101. And uh, I remember my sister said, geez, when you write, my younger sister said, try to make it not so complicated. And I thought to myself, in my mind, oh my gosh, I didn't think it was deep enough. 
But you know, that's why it's, it, it's, it's important that when you say, look, I was about ready to give up on my marriage, or I was about ready to commit suicide and I heard a small, still voice, or I just wanted to quit my job and it wasn't the time to do it. And you know, people go, well, I, I can understand that. So just remember, it's personal and it's very easy to understand. Number three. You are the authority on it. It's difficult to argue with. You know, sometimes we share, we get in these arguments, these intellectual arguments with people about God. Does God exist? Did Adam and Eve really happen? Did, uh, you know, um, I don't know, was there such thing as the Red Sea? Did it really part? And are there really miracles? And, you know, I hear all these debates and all these arguments. It's kind of like we've got to take everything that we read and put it into a little box so that we can understand it. And, and there's a mystery to how God does things. I, I re read it on, uh, I was watching History Channel one time and you know, I was just listening and I was like, oh, well, here's how the Red Sea really got parted. I'm like, you weren't there. You don't know. That's not the point. But when you're giving your personal testimony, God did this in my life. I was, I used to drink and now I don't drink. God has changed me. Look, I had a real eating disorder of overeating. And I know that God has played an, an incredible part in changing, you know, what, what's happening with my my eating disorder. So people can't argue with it. I've lost 35 pounds. A person say, no, you really didn't. I mean, well, they're not going to argue with me. They can see it. So your personal testimony is very valuable. It's, you know, it's personal and, and people can't argue with it. Number four. People love to hear personal stories and they remember them. They surely do. They surely do. You know, you tell a story and, you know, here's what happened. And, and I've seen my wife share with people. She was counseling somebody one day and their marriage was, in, you know, having trouble. And she shared with them the message of grace. And, you know, we call the gospel, of, the, the gospel is, I believe, is the gospel of grace. Grace and truth. Yes, there is truth in life that certain behaviors are unacceptable, but we need to proceed it all with grace. And people need grace when we're going through tough times. So... You know, people can relate to struggles with weight, struggles with any sort of addiction, struggles with negativity, struggles with complaining, you know, struggle with abuse, anxiety, whatever it may be, they can relate to how did you change? Number six. People, oh, wait, did I say number five? I'm sorry. Thank you, Liv. It says this. What does it say, honey? People can relate to it. It builds a relational bridge. I love that Rick Warren taught me one time. He said, uh, what do unbelievers and believers have in common? He said, love. And he said, and, and he said that's why we, what we do with unbelievers, we, bridge, we build a bridge of love so that Jesus can walk across. You know, to, to people, you know, when I first came to Christ, if you talk to me about Jesus, I was like, oh, God, I don't want to hear it. I just thought of the Catholic Church. You know, many of you know that I was sexually abused when I was a kid, and I just didn't want to hear any of it. It was, it just, I don't, you know, to me, Jesus was a bad anchor. But when you start relating to how, I didn't think that God had anything to do with your life. I thought it was just rituals, and we go to church, and it's about fear, and it's about guilt, and d don't chew and don't smoke, don't smoke, don't chew, don't hang around people who do. I had no idea. But you see, but it builds a relational bill, a bridge with people when we start talking about how did you handle, what, it, what in the teachings of Jesus Christ changed your life that enabled you to handle something differently? And people can relate to those stories because everyone's going through stress. Everyone's going through financial issues. Everyone's going through people, you know, forgiveness problems, all of these things that are all in the Bible. Number six, here it is. In our postmodern world, it may be your most effective witness. You know, well, many people, they're only part of relating to, um, you know, what they see in Christianity is either uh, a, a television evangelist who's asking for money or, or uh, you know, somebody who's just screaming and yelling or something they read in the news about the latest scandal. So our postmodern world, where we are right now, is very challenging to bring somebody to Christ. Many years ago, you know, doom and gloom used to do it. You know, fear and guilt would just like, oh, I don't want to go to hell, so I'm going to accept Christ. Those are the days of Billy Graham. But today, things are much differently. You know, people are like, what is this going to do? To, what are these teachings, this stuff you're learning, the place you're going, the stuff you're studying? How is it going to change my life and make it better? You know, so it may be the only effective way. And, and I think it's real sad because of the fact that 
since most people don't know how to share anymore and the standing on street corners and handing out tracts has been so done so much that many people have not shared their testimony anymore. That's why this next part here I'm uh, hoping is going to enable you to not get so weird about it all, but just make it very simple on how you can share your testimony and help people. Here's this next slide. Here's what it says. What does it say, honey? The four parts of your testimony. I just want you to remember this is the four simple parts of your testimony of how you can share to God, how you can share to people about what God has done in your life. Number one, here it is. My testimony. My testimony consists of my life before I met Jesus. It's very simple. What, what was going on? You know, and, I, and I, you'll see at the end of this thing that I, I will tell you how much time to spend on each one. And I don't want to get so complicated where you, you're talking to somebody and you're focused on that, but it's just to be able to sit there and say to somebody, you know what, look, I have been abusive in my life. Now, you know, I could sit there and give you all these descriptions and things I did, and, but that's not, I don't want to focus on that. The, part, the main part of your testimony is not where you were before you met Jesus, it's just to let people, people can relate to, you know, look, I had this problem with anger. Well, me too. You know, I've had the same problem. Well, people will say, how did you get rid of it? You pay such a price for it. So number two, here's the second part. Well, actually, I'm going to give you a little more detail here on, on the questions you should ask when you're, when you're giving that first part of your testimony. What, does what it say? common circumstances would an unbeliever identify with? Very good. What were your attitudes that an unbeliever would identify with. Mm -hmm. What was most important to you? We'll take all those in consideration when you're discussing it with somebody. You know, it's amazing that a lot of times we just seem to leave counseling for pastors, but I think everybody should be a counselor because, you know, there's just, you know, you're at work and you've got somebody who comes in that are all frazzled and people will talk to you or you're at, you, maybe you're, you're in school, whatever it may be, people want to know how you made it through. In fact, you know, it's kind of funny because my daughter just turned 15 and I said to her the other day, I was just curious of how she, you know, she's gone through some kind of challenging things up here. And I just wanted to know, how did you handle these things? And she said, I did it, well, Dad, I did it this way and I did it this way. And really, without her knowing it, she was sharing a testimony of how she's put up with people being mean to her and she had to handle our foster kids. And so without knowing it, she gave me this little testimony which was, uh, you know, quite, I don't know, it just, I was just very impressed with what I had, had to say. Number two, my testimony consists of what? My needs to follow Jesus. You know, you know I know I need something. Unfortunate thing in life is we, sit, we tend to think, you know, if I get another car, if I get more children, if I get this, you know, any, any of these things I get, more clothing, you know, it's all going to fix it. But it isn't. It is the presence of Jesus in your life and his teachings that are going to change your life. Let's take a look in detail about my needs. Here's the questions to be asking yourself. What significant steps led up to your conversion? What needs hurts, or problems made you dissatisfied with the way you were living without God? How did God get your attention? What motivated you? What made you decide to just, I, I, I you know, I want to follow Jesus. I, you know, I love the phrase, you don't have to live this way. And I think that's the part of it. I mean, I, I was running a recording studio and a booking agency, and to me it was all about, you know, stuff. Could I build a, get a bigger house? Could I have more cars? Could I be more important? Could I be more popular? And I was just so stressed out. Is this all there is to life? And you know, it's funny because a Jewish friend of mine gave me a tape series. Uh, I don't know if it was a tape series or a book, but it was called The Be Happy Attitude. It was written by Dr. Schuler, And uh, it was the beginning of, you know, these are the teachings of Jesus Christ. This stuff is in the Bible. I remember reading Happiness is a Choice and I was thinking, oh my gosh, I'd never heard that before. I thought happiness, you know, we were just, you know, if you made a lot of money, you were happy. If everybody liked you, you were happy. But, you know, it wasn't what was happening to you. It was how you responded to what was happening. So when I started reading this book, I just wanted to know more. And I became a junkie of trying to read more and more books on life and freedom and truth. And, you know, why was I so messed up? So here's number three. My testimony consists of number three is this. My decision to live for Jesus. Now, you know, my decision to change my life. My decision that I, I want to, um, you know, just what do I do? How, how do I, you know, and I started going to church. And I'll tell you, I, I, I love these people that gives the testimony of like, 
all of a sudden, I went to church, I walked down and did an altar call, and my whole life changed. That wasn't me. I've been on a long, slow, slow, slow journey of, of, of change. And I still, you know, at times get very tired and at times can get a little cranky and at times just, you know, just want to give up. And I'm just like you. I go through it. But, you know, God always comes through, you know. Take a look at some details on, um, on my decision. Here's a little detail on. What specifically did you do? Where did it happen? What did you say in your prayer? Be specific. I will tell you this, for those of you who've gone down for altar calls, I've gone down for so many altar calls, it's ridiculous. You know, I, didn't, I, I just thought that I could just go down there and I would give my life to Jesus and everything would change, but it didn't for me. It was a long, long process and it's still a process. So if you're like me, I can understand. I used to make up a date on the day that I was born again. I wasn't even sure where it was. That's why we all have different testimonies, but God has been doing a great work and he's not done. I say this all the time, I'm not who I used to be, I'm not who I want to be, but I'm striving to who I know that God wants me to be. And last but not least, here's the important one, is number four. My benefits of following Jesus. Yeah, what, 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 you know, what are you getting out of this? Is it just, you're going to church now and you, you, you've got to attend Bible study and you've got to attend membership class and all these things and you've got all these projects to do and it's, is it just really, I got more stuff to do and most people think, well, oh, really, is that what being a Christian is? You've got to follow more rules? No, it's not. I mean, I, I will tell you this, that I have a peace that surpasses all understanding. I have more peace and more joy than I've ever had in my life. Do I have it all the time? No, oh, probably about 98% of the time. And I'm learning things like boundaries and my, let my yeses be yes and nos be no. And there's just certain things that I'm realizing that I don't need so much stuff in my life. And I don't need, realize that I have to be famous anymore. And there's so many things that I'm just letting go in my life you know, because of the benefits. When I read the book Purpose Driven Life by Rick Warren, it so simplified my life of understanding the five purposes. If you've never read the book, I'd recommend that you, I highly recommend that you read that book. It's an incredible book. Let's take a look at more about my benefits. Take a little more in the details. What benefits have you experienced or felt? What problems have been resolved? How has Jesus helped you change for the better? How has it helped your relationships? Yeah. Give a current example. You know, we were, uh, we were talking to this couple, and this couple was struggling in a marriage. I think I talked about this a little bit earlier, and Cheryl sh shared the message of grace. And we spoke to them the other day, and he said, you know, we're doing a heck of a lot better. And we're, we're, we're talking about things, and, you know, and we're giving each other grace on the bad days and, giving our, and grateful for on the good days. So you see, I mean, that was a little testimony back to us of what God was doing there in their lives. Well, let's look at what we call the testimony pyramid, okay? We'll take a look at this and I'm gonna explain this, okay? What you're seeing right now is the four parts that I just talked about. Number one is my life, least time on part one, talking about how you were before you met Jesus. Don't, you know, it, so, some people like to glorify the fact that they were drunks and alcoholics and I used to beat up people, you know, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, you do that around kids and you'll motivate kids to want to live the lifestyle and they go, well, one day I'll, you know, come to Jesus. So you spend a little more time on part two, which is your needs. Why did you feel? You know, maybe I, I've been married two or three, four times. Things were happening to me that I knew that there was a problem. I knew I needed something to change in my life. So more time even on part three, how you made your decision. I, I looked at my life and I realized that, man, I just can't keep living this way. And I, I looked at other people that were Christians and it seemed like their lives were better. And I thought, I've got nothing to lose. And you gave your life to Jesus. But the most time is on part four, you know, that I found real friends or, or that real changes come about in my life. So you see, a little bit of time on my life, on, 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 on the way you were before you found Jesus, why you felt you needed Jesus, part two, a little bit more. Talk a little bit more about your decision, how you, what made you just, you know, where were you? Were you in a church? Were you in a Bible study? Were you watching TV? What made you say, I need to change my life and, and give your life over to Christ? But the most time on the benefits. I love this. Thank you, Liv. I, I, um, you know, we did a, a teaching, I think it was on the last show where we talked about the church on the Good News Show. And I love this verse because this more explains, better explains the fact that, you know, how important you are in this equation, your testimony, the value of your testimony and why you share it. You know, there was a, a person by the name of, Saint, I think it was St. Augustine who said, preach the gospel, use words if necessary. 
I think sometimes what gets to be so hard as a Christian is, you know, what it's, it's actions so speak louder than words. You know, we are looking at the possibilities of living in a place called Niceville, and I think I just love the town. And I, if I think I wanted to define Christianity in, 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 in a simple phrase would just to be nice. I mean, if you remember your favorite school teacher, it's because that person was nice. You think about the people that you enjoy being with, it's because they're nice. Take a look at this Bible verse in 1 Thessalonians and see what it has to say. Your lives are echoing the Master's word. The news of your faith in God is out. We don't even have to say anything more. You're the message. Isn't that awesome? The way you are. You know, we've, we go through challenges being here, and I love what Cheryl said. She says, you know, she was talking to us this morning. She said, look, no matter what happens, we're going to go out and we're going to say hi to people and we're going to be nice to everybody and we're just going to do the right thing. Well, you know what? Seek first the kingdom of God, which is righteousness, doing the right thing, and peace and joy, and the rest will be added to it. You know, it was great advice. So here's the life lesson for this whole thing that I just taught on, and I hope you play it back to remind you. What does it say, honey? Life lesson? Don't be scared to share. Don't be scared to share. <laughs> you know, you don't have to, you know, use all the buzzwords and let me tell you how Yeshua Jesus changed my life. And, you know, God is not on some ego trip. You know, sometimes you just begin with a message and how you approach life differently. And you can tell by watching people if you're turning them on or turning them off. But I'm not one to, to go up and, you know, you can scare people into becoming a believer, but they won't last for long. You know, it's like I heard a pastor say the other day, I can guilt you into tithing, but he said it will never give you the spirit of generosity. And he's so right. And I mean, you know, we need to do everything in the spirit that God wants us to do. Not a head game, not an argument. You know, How to Win Friends and Influence People is a wonderful book to read. And I think, you know, Christians should read that book, not to influence people so that you can take advantage of them, but you can influence people to bring them to Christ. So here's our series next week because that life lesson was don't be scared to share. Next week is this, Frozen in Fear, and the first teaching is going to be called The Foundations for No Fear Living. I'm hoping that now you know, thank you, Liv, I'm hoping now you know how to give a testimony, the value of testimony and, 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 and understanding why, how important it is for you to bring people to Christ. But before we go off, and I'm not saying this to make you feel guilty, I'm going to just ask you this simple question. Is anybody going to be in heaven because of you? Is anybody going to be in heaven because of you? And you'll be amazed. You know, you bring one person to Christ and that person brings another person to Christ and you'll get to heaven and you'll find that there are a thousand people that, have, that are in heaven today because of the fact that you share to one person. Well, I hope you've grabbed something out of tonight. I'm going to end by turning this back over to Cheryl and Cheryl's going to read the, the two prayers on the screen because I think it's real important. I don't ever want you to leave here without, uh, you know, with having, being, feeling afraid. And I'm going to help you next month with teaching you about sharing your testimony and being frozen in fear, such as such a popular movie right now. But I also don't want you to feel guilty. You know, the Bible says whoever puts his hand on the plow looks back is not fit for the kingdom. If you haven't been sharing your testimony, don't beat yourself up. The Holy Spirit is going to lead you to go out and help somebody. And to those of you that naturally help people, thank God, because if it wasn't for somebody who shared the gospel with me, my Jewish partner, if you can believe that, brought me a copy of a book, and I follow Christ today. I follow Yeshua today because of him. I will always be grateful for, for him having done that to me. So now I'm going to leave this with my wife, and she's going to lead you in the, in, my, in the most wonderful prayer in the world. Thank you, honey. Thank you, Pastor Rick. And now you can read along with me as well as we close in prayer. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is abuse, let me bring love. Where there is hurt, let me bring forgiveness. Where there is doubt, let me bring faith. Where there is despair, let me bring hope. Where there is darkness, let me bring light. Where there is sadness, let me bring joy. Dear God, help me that I focus not so much on being comforted, but that I may comfort others. Not to be understood, but that I may understand others. Not that I am loved, but that I love others. For it is in the giving that we receive. It is in the forgiving that we are forgiven. It is in the dying to self that we are born into a meaningful life. In Jesus' name we pray. See you all next week. Thanks for joining us.